Here's part three of our conversation with Steve Hackett. Looking back at that album, and I revisited it again this morning, and I've heard that album more than any other Genesis album, but it's amazing how it has stood the test of time. It still sounds amazing. Yeah, it's, it's a very um, um, anomalous kind of album. Um, I don't think there are any other albums like it from any other band. Um, I think a band would be hard pushed to say, you know, well, let's make an album like this. Yeah. Um, because it's it's so characterful isn't it you know pete's vocals are very much an actor's approach to singing so there's a german word sprechstimme which means um, almost like sung speech where you're talking it uh, like rex harrison in my fair lady yeah it's that way and and in a way it's part of jim morrison's approach to to singing as well as as he did so well you know where it's low and intoning like a bell. So these are different vocal approaches. And when Pete kicked it off, the whole album, he said, oh, I had an idea of Scottish plain song. So he said, if I sing it entirely on my own, the opening lines, then it grows. And um, it's, it's, you know, it's very characterful. It, it, it's very Peter Gabriel. Um, and one of his best contributions, I I think l yeah. lyrically, the wordplay, I can see why it might have appealed to uh, to John Lennon. And Firth the Fifth was another one when you brought in riffing ideas, right, with that. Yeah, I think that, you know, I'm, I'm always uh, complimenting Tony Banks with, with that song, uh, whereas a lot of fans tend to say, well, yeah, but, you know, it's your, it, it's your moment because of what the guitar does, because the guitar gets to take it for three minutes straight halfway through the song. Um, and... And um, all I can say is my interpretation of his melody. So um, uh, sometimes you have to be content with being an arranger or a humble plank spanker. You know, that's that's mm. what you have to do. Um, uh, but it, it, it was a great tune. I remember uh, Pete said to me when Tony came up with the uh, the verse, he said, look, I, I do believe that, that Tony is very close to writing a blues here for the first time. So I think... I think he saw a slightly sort of gospel feel in it. Something, there was something that was uh, not merely European. What was the reaction? I know Phil had sang before and harmonized, of course, but more fool me. Like, that's basically, is that, that's um, Mike and, basically Mike and, and Phil, right? Mike and Phil, Phil and Mike. Um, doing it, it had been very lovely. I never played on it, on the record, but it's lovely to be able to do it live now with, the addition of, of um, you know, harpsichord and, and mm -hmm. uh, extra extra keyboards, some strings. I use twelve string on it, and I play something like the the, the part that that that, uh, that Mike played. But in a way, um, I try and play guitar a little bit like a keyboard player at times. So um, I'm sounding more like a harpsichord hmm. playing that, and then um, Roger King playing keyboards with us now. Um, uh, tends to play it more like a guitarist. So we blur that, and it always was part of the appeal and the, and the soundscaping of early Genesis, this combination of things where you couldn't quite tell, was it guitar, was it keyboard? And, you know, the marriage of those two ideas and those sound sources are what characterized the early band a lot. It really goes into, the, the I think, the spirit of the band. of Like, when you redo them, it, uh, it, for me, it adds, like, an element of what would it sound like if it was made today. Um and it's still growing. That's that's really very much it. You've hit the nail on the head. I like to think that those songs uh, uh, were constructed organically with people suggesting things. And if it was a piece of a sculpture, then that still gets polished through through what I do with it. What the band and uh, bring to it. For instance, when Rob um, does stuff, sometimes the diehards feel that all the flute parts should be played on flute, whereas. Um, I think, well, yes, but that might be better on soprano sax, mm -hmm. or um, we may double up, uh, you know, what was originally supposed to be a trumpet on, on analog keyboard. Um, when you double that with um, with uh, with uh, with something wind blown, then suddenly it becomes closer to the original uh, inspiration for it, and the, here comes the cavalry moment, for instance on, on um, Epping Forest um, I feel that by doing that and adding some 
trills myself, in a way, it's it's colouring it to the degree that it perhaps should have been or could have been originally. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. And buy a t-shirt, help support our channel, link in the description of this video. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Stream Music. Mm -hmm.